What's going on, everybody? I'm Kevin from Cigar Prop. I'm Jesse from Cigar Prop. And we are doing a cigar review together. It's been a hot minute, uh, many, many months. So we're in our new cigar lounge on our house. And um, we've got some very special cigars. Jessica brought home from work a couple of the, uh, the Marifel Ernest. Marifel, Marifel. Uh, this is the Ernest. So a little bit about the cigar while Jessica shows everybody. The Marifel Ernest is the newest addition to Marifel's luxury line of cigars. This cigar, like the others before it, is named after important figures in the Marifel family's history. Ernest Marifel of Unter Grumbach, Germany, left his family and village on a mission to revolutionize the world of premium tobacco. This cigar will be limited to 613 boxes per size, and the blend is undisclosed. Blend everything, wrapper, binder, filler, everything undisclosed. Uh, the Mirafil Ernest Master Blend is filled with aspirational sensations, layers of curiosity, and an awe-inspiring complexity, exemplifying the unique exploration of those who leave behind the assumed safety and comfort to conquer, conquer only the finest, the intricacy of uber luxury. That's from Jeremiah Mirafil. Uh, MSRP is $46.00. For the cigar. Uh, also, these are last year's. Oh, these are last year's? These okay. Last year's. We do have ones for, well, 2023. And these are, I guess, 2022. Oh, okay. So this is a MSRP $46, four and seven eighths by 50. That is a, that is a. I, it's hard to show you the wrapper. It's, it's just beautiful. It almost looks like. A, filming in 4K, Jessica. Oh, they can they can see everything. Oh, really? Uh, I don't know. Probably, oh, the camera's over there. Oh, sorry. So, um, so like, it almost has that, like, uh, Aztec Mayan. Yeah, vibe on the, uh, on the band. On the very back, do you see that? It's like a dragon or, like, a person or something? Uh, I don't know. Like, I'll have to or... find a picture, maybe throw it up on the uh the, I don't the know. I'm going to. Oh, I think it's a. It's like a person anyway i think it's a person on oh, no, a horse you no know, it's like the horse what are those uh called where they're half horse half human a centaur a centaur that's what it looks like okay i'm i'm we're gonna take a picture i'm 100 percent sure that jeremiah merrifield did not put a centaur on his uh when he's wrong <laughs> yeah. all right I owed. all right so we're going to uh we've got our rating sheets here um oh also they come in these yeah, they cool come. fancy boxes, boxes. For forty six dollars, better come in something. It actually, but, this box might have been for the larger size. I didn't grab the yeah. correct box, but each cigar comes yeah. in a pot. I just yeah. grabbed a box. Yeah. All right, <laughs> so we got all our tasting sheets here. Um, basically, four sections. Uh, each one baseline ten. So we start off with a hundred. So and then you can only lose points from there. We'll go over that as we um, um, go over. But uh, the first one, baseline uh, uh, appearance. Appearance. It is. Uh, it is a beautiful. I'm. A, um. Uh. I. You know. And like we've talked about and, and fought in the past before. Mm -hmm. Had a, a, a exciting arguing. Not argue, Exciting discussions. Um. When you're selling a scar for forty six dollars, better be flawless. Um. Better smoke, burn, draw everything about it. And um. I've got a little. I, I two huge veins you got all yeah and that and that van and that and that vein cuts through yeah all the way through on both sides cuts through the band i i don't know if that'll be able to see it um i've got like a little bit of a um like a i don't know like a blemish in the cap um if these were if, if these were I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there these were 10 12 dollar cigars who cares if these are forty six dollars cigars. How, how how do these get? I mean, it could be my transport of them, or it could just be like I don't, I don't, I don't think I think that because I think that's that is mine's that, a solid. That's a little vein so, under the cap. So, um, they are a little fragile. You can tell that the the outer wrapper is just like a tad, like especially at the bottom here. If you touch it, it's a, it, it's a little. But it's very, fragile. it's smooth, but it's very rustic. It is. It's, 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 it's got, got, it's got a lot of grooves on it. Um, like with, with, I mean, if, if you're looking at it, it's, you know, it's got it's a very Connecticut broadleaf, uh, rustic looking. Um, uh, fresh my memory. So appearance. What am I doing? So um, uh, just excessively vain. You can deduct whatever you want. This is your own personal preference. Hey, if you don't you. like that vein, deduct one point. If it doesn't yeah. bother you. No, it doesn't um, bother me. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, um, uh, um, uh, cap damage. Um, 
on an $8 cigar, I wouldn't have noticed that. You know, wouldn't yeah. have cared, but on a $46 you charm, I'm, 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 I'm deducting a, a point other than that. But other, you know, it's a beautiful. Let's let's get these cut. All right. And let's get the... Uh... Okay. Ooh. So Kevin likes to do a straight cut. And, I like and, a and, cut. and I like to make a mess. I forgot to do we that. We have an ash spray over, over here. Yeah. The big woman. Can't yeah. sit. So... Oh. All right, I'm not getting any real like notes, like when I'm just kind of smell. I don't do the cold draw often. Kevin's um, notorious for that. Yeah, nothing. Just, um, but I'm not getting any. Yeah, I mean the uh, a little like like a little like thingy sweetness like yeah. hey. I'm just getting a just your In the just throat. tobacco just tobacco just cigar tobacco, but uber light draw. I mean, I mean, I can I could probably suck a piece of paper against that, and that's on the cold draw. And uh, these cigars, uh, Marifel, I mean, just getting crazy ratings. I mean, you're not hearing one bad thing no. from anybody on this, on any of their cigars. And like I said, everything, uh, I, you know, with them, I mean, there's, Fuente's got to be making these. I don't know who's making the cigars. And I can only assume they're going after with with kind of like the the branding and kind of like from what I've been getting of some of those cigars going after that Cuban um, cigar smoker. So I'm I'm expecting the cigar to be a little bit lighter. Like, I'll wait till you finish smoking it a little bit. Don't say anything. Though. Yeah, Okay. <clears throat> you want me to go first? I did. I tried. Oh. I tried. No, I tried red. Nitro? Zero. Nothing. Like there's no burn. There's no sensation. Nothing. There, there's just. Let me see how you retro. So you actually did a pretty decent retro. Nothing. Okay. But are you getting a nice note? And I'm not even getting, I'm not getting a note of anything. I'm not getting, there's zero burn. Zero. Usually, mm -hmm. retro makes my eyes water. I'm not getting anything. Interesting. So, I'm not getting a burn on the retro at all. But I'm getting an amazing, like, sweet, almost leather. Like, it's like a sweet hay with leather, like, instantly. And I smelt, it's like the same when I smelt it, it had like this nice, like sweet hay, like undertone to it. And I got that in the retro with some leather. So this cigar, I, I you know what? I would describe this cigar as a Cuban cigar in 1950s, um, which I've never smoked one. Um, like I said, Previously, from what I've read, I, I think this line is gravitating and trying to take some of that here, here, Cuba, Cuban cigar. Problem, Hold on. Though. Why are you reading all this stuff and then now integrating that into your review? No, no, no not, other not on this cigar, just on the cigar lines in general. Maybe they're t you're trying to draw some of that, the Cuban cigar smokers you ever. So for me, for this, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting anything. Okay. I feel like I, I saw. So this is how I would imagine. This is what a, how I would imagine when Cuban cigar smokers talk about the best Cuban cigar you can ever smoke. So that I think their, this is like this okay. would be what they're talking okay, about. I can understand that. Yeah. Okay. I, I like it's where, it's a clean cigar. Okay. Okay. I see where you're coming from, but you're also now just spitting out quotes of other things you've heard and not really your actual opinion. I feel like you're almost tainted on. I'm going to say it's that because that's basically what everyone has said online is that it's very Cuban-esque. Instead of just focusing on the notes in the actual cigar in its entirety, rather than what to classify it as. Who cares? Well, I do it Because that, that's how, because I can't, I'm not picking because out any notes. Because you're so, not so, using so, your own side of your own brain. I am. So, may, so maybe there are some people out there well, I'm sure. that will understand and see where I'm going with yeah, this. Yes, and I think there are going to be people out there that understand where I'm coming from. But here's my whole thing is, is that, 
like Atabase, Byron's, they're kind of in that whole yeah. Cubanesque style. Like that's kind of, you know, the premises of them. And I've smoked quite a few and I smoked quite a few Alfonso's and I mean, and I'm not a and I'm not a mild cigar smoker by any means. And they're to have like this amazing creaminess to them that's just so smooth and um I don't know, this I find to be very smooth, but it has a little bit of those hints of hay and leather that I like that I'm getting. And I'm surprised you're not getting any notes. What I'm you know, I'm getting just a mild cigar smoke. Um just just a good a good tobacco. You can tell like the tobaccos in here are very and 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 I don't understand and I don't have a way of putting out that the word other than clean. No, I very, I agree very with that and some people don't and I've said that before people didn't understand that, but for me it's just a very clean yeah, smoke here. like you pull it into i pull it across my palate i i blow it back out and there's nothing left no, there's I, nothing left on my palate I, and i understand what you mean by that and i guess i can maybe help try to clarify that a little bit if people don't really understand what clean means you know when you smoke a cigar and there's like an aftertaste and it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad aftertaste but there's an aftertaste there's no aftertaste it's no. just like whatever you you had tasted before you ever even smoked the cigar is what you're tasting in your mouth kind of thing. Like if you took a drink, that's what you're tasting. Yeah. You're not tasting any. So once you blow it out, it's just your palate's fresh. It's almost as if there's no bitterness or anything from the cigar. Sometimes the oils from the cigar are like bitter and it leaves a little bit of a bitterness on your tongue. You're not getting any of that like at all. And this is definitely not an oily cigar. No, like and, and the, none of and that. The only note I'm getting, the only note, and I'm trying as you're talking, I'm trying to to pinpoint that note, and it's just a woody note. And then for me, I'm going to say cardboard. That's not a bad thing. Cardboard is paper. It is wood. Oh, I know that you said you that, know, though. Like when I just did like the smoke chopping, like yeah. in my mouth, like I almost have like that, like paper. Yeah, it's, you know, and it's not by no, far, not, no, not, no, not no, about, no, you know, but yeah. You said that, I was like, hmm. Yeah. But I still am getting leather. Like, I'm kind of surprised that you're not getting leather. Yeah. Um, A little, little bit of a, a, a thicker char line. That's really nice. Um, that. But, uh, I mean, flat top, I mean, it is so it's solid. With my two huge veins going down both sides, this is yeah. burning beautifully. Like, yeah, beautifully. It is a rock. It's not a stack of dimes. It is one solid ash. Yeah. So, all right. I know I've been pumping on this a little bit too much. Someone's probably going to say something in the comment section. So I'm going to go ahead and set this down. I'm going to let that cool down for a couple of minutes. I'm going to come back into it. We're going to, these aren't, these are not long cigars. Like I said, these yeah. were only four and seven eighths by 50. Um, so we're going to smoke these down, kind of jot down some uh, notes maybe. And then we'll see y'all back here in a little bit. All right, we are back. And then uh, right before, let me, well, like I so said, th this will lead me into what I'm about to talk about here. So, uh, um, Jessica, burning rock solid. Mine has been flaky and these protrusions coming off of it and it's spilling and on the sheet honestly, and on me the whole time. I thought mine was going to because of the thing. Perfect. Perfect burn. Perfect ash. The ash is flaky. When, when mine, but mine got, what, it was about that, that tall? It probably had about three quarters of an inch it, before it, it just, fell off. before it broke But then off. after that, I realized, okay, once it gets into a certain point, I need to ash it. Clean, broke off beautifully. Yeah. But you. you mine was just, mine was just constantly just flaking off on me um, during the whole, the whole time. So let's go over some scores. Do you want to go over yours first? No, you can go over yours. All right, so. Would I buy this cigar again? Baseline, 10 points. You can only lose points. Um, no, deduct two points. Stick only, deduct one point. Um, I, I put no, I, I would not buy this cigar again. Um, it was a little bit flaky of an ash. The, the price point did play a, a role in that decision of whether I would buy this cigar again or not. $46 is quite a bit to spend on such a small cigar. Um, and then not knowing what's behind this cigar, wrapper, binder, filler, undisclosed. 
Maybe I'm smoking something exotic. Should that be taken into consideration? No, it shouldn't. You should base it on this, but I don't know. I'm a, I'm a cigar geek. I want to know those deets. Maybe some of them deets uh, will get me to buy the cigar again. Um, appearance, uh, I did deduct uh, the one point for that little bit of uh, um, cap, cap damage. Once again, on a regular cigar, 10, 12 bucks. I wouldn't even have noticed that point. But these are all of this. Everything is based on a $46 price point for me. Uh, construction, just one point deduction for the flaky ash. Um, overall flavor, I was generous and gave it a five. Um, I got that, um, just that that cardboard, that woodiness throughout, but it was so mild. And I tried to concentrate. I tried to find some flavor, some notes, and I just couldn't. It seemed like several times there was something there, but it was fleeting and it was just gone before I had a chance to put some put a, a word to it. Um, so I gave it a five. Um, it's a it's a mild cigar for sure. So my overall score was a seven point seven five um, out of ten. Okay. So I have I've had a good experience with this cigar. And I'm not a huge mild cigar smoker, but, and I did get some notes in there. And then even now towards the, the end here and doing the retro, there's just, there's just some kind of undertone, like, um, it's not a cocoa. I'm not even really sure. Like maybe more like a hazelnut, but it's real mild, like, like a coffee undertone and it's smooth and it's creamy and it's tasty and it's, I don't know, I'm enjoying it. So anyway. Would you buy this cigar again? Um, no, you deduct two points. Stick only, deduct one point. Bog is worthy. Um, I just put a nine because I would buy this stick again, me personally. But as a single stick. As yeah. a single stick. Um, the appearance, I just deducted the one because of the vein. To me, like I, anytime I've ever had veiny cigars, they do run. And surprisingly, this did not. But I'm wondering if in the past, some of the veiny cigars I've had have been broken veins. Like, they're not completely yeah. a full vein. Like, there's a couple different parts, so it's broken too much. And this was solid, like a solid vein. But anyway, I gave that... But a, a pronounced vein, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, and yeah. so for me, I mean, you call them like like gritty or like more like rugged cigar. Sometimes I just don't like that look or that feel yeah. to it. That's me personally. So I gave that a nine. I took a point away. Um, the construction, um, I gave it a 10 because I didn't have any issues at all. Like as far as the burn, the ash, all that stuff. I mean, even though it did have a little bit of a flaky ash, I didn't deduct a point because it didn't actually be like flaky like it was for you. Yeah, it wasn't falling it wasn't on, on It wasn't yeah. falling on me. It wasn't, yeah. you know, horrible. And then I did give it a five for for overall flavor. I gave yeah. it a five too. Yeah, because, yes, yeah. Because I felt like, yes, I agree with you. It was very, um, like, clean. Like it had that yeah. clean. But I did pick up on some notes. But I didn't think it was mind blowing. Like, oh my god, like there's this, you know, amazing, amazing undertone note, which I didn't hate that there wasn't. It didn't, like, it left you fleeting looking for something more where I kind of was like, oh, I actually enjoy this. It was just a nice, calm transition through the whole cigar. Like, you didn't really get any notes. I just got some hay and leather, and now I'm getting a little bit of, like, that hazelnut through the retro, and I'm enjoying it. So, uh, after I, like, and it's definitely mild, so I gave it an 8.25. Yeah, it's uh, de definitely two, you know, that that's why we, we love doing these. The, I love doing the reviews with two people so you can get two different sides of it instead of, you know, me with the with the flakiness. Maybe I just got a one off. Jessica obviously didn't have any issues with hers. So but you're getting you're getting two separate but sides. Here also, yeah. to full disclosure, I am not as crazy about price point as you are. Like, that's always been our thing. Like, you oh, are yeah. a huge price point person i am not and i think you think of like the average consumer which is great where i just think for myself i'm pretty yeah. selfish person like where i'm like okay i'm going to buy this cigar because i i want it um where not everyone has maybe that not that i have this great luxury but i do spend my money on the things that i like that's this is one of my vices if that's what you want to call it 
So I spend my money on it. Some people obviously have to spread their money in different ways. And you are thinking for that conscious person. Yeah, I am. It, which it, I don't which I don't hate. I think that that's a good outlook. Yeah. I'm looking at it from a perspective be, be, of because I I'm, bought it because I wanted it. That's it. You know, I, I'm I'm also looking at it from I, I'm I'm going into a lounge. I'm I'm I've got it. Uh, I just got a promotion at work. I'm going to go into Corona Cigar. I'm going to I want an expensive cigar to celebrate. I've got an Atabe, I got a Byron, I got an Alfonso, I got a Fuente Fuente Opus X. Right. Even um, I, Davidoff. Even Davidoff, Anniversario number two, only a $17 cigar. Um, uh, you got all of these. And then you've got like this $46 uh, Mirafil, which is, it's it's all on that, that you say, you you think of that shelf. And it's just like, I, I sm I've i smoked all those and I would be, I, I would have a good experience. I've always, yeah, that was a, it's a good cigar for celebrate, you know, to that occasion. But I get to this one after forty six dollars keeps coming back in the gig like that. That movie, Better Off Dead, forty six no, dollars, two dollars, two dollars, forty six dollars. You know, and, and I would be disappointed. Okay, after here, that. But then here's the other thing. That's your experience. That's my. Right. That's what and, this. And this that's is about the great me. thing about it. Yeah. I don't think anyone should ever be discouraged from wanting to buy a higher end cigar. Not at all. So here's my thing. Yes. Some people can't justify spending certain amounts of money on higher end cigars, but you also don't know if you've never bought them. So you can't just say, oh, they're overpriced. They're too, too much money for what they are. Cause that's not always the case. It's not, not always. And, the case. and that's, and this is, this is all about an experience, right? So one time that you buy a higher end cigar, that's, that's one time. No one's asking anyone to do it multiple times, but I feel like it's important to try to smoke some higher end cigars and you might shock yourself on like some of the other cigars that you're smoking. So yeah, you say, Ooh, a $12 cigar, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But then in sometimes with those $12 cigars, they burned really bad. They yeah. tunneled really bad. Yeah. Uh, the wrapper starts to fall apart. And, and I, and, and, so I'm just saying, and I don't feel as bad as if it happened but, to an expensive. But what I'm saying is though, in my experience with yeah. this forty six dollar cigar, I didn't yeah. have any bad experience. Yeah. Yours just happened to be, and that happens. And, 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 and roll. This is so what you and, 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 and the only issue I've had with this cigar is just that flaky ash. Yeah. I can put all of that aside mm -hmm. if the cigar had some pronounced notes. If it was a little bit stronger, which that maybe that's not what this was no, made for no, not, not at all so so like i said so if it if it was stronger if it was bolder so if it if it was a if it if, if it was a church hill if it was it's not even five there inches were, there are not even five inches there is it's ten dollars an okay. inch there are different <laughs> sizes so here yeah. okay, old disclosure i was going with the cheapest one out of the whole lineup yeah for uh, i could have bought the 96 dollar one yeah. <laughs> like I'm just saying, like twenty five dollars an inch, just saying. yeah. But I, I mean, I have smoked quite a few Atabays and Byrons and Alfonsos lately, and the Alfonsos right now are like some of my most favorite cigars. So I splurge once a week or every two weeks. I buy an Alfonso or a Byron or an Atabay for myself. So it's not something you have to do all the time. It's something that occasionally. But they there are really good high end cigars out there. Yes. Does the price point sometimes hurt a little bit? Yeah, but if you are, at, if you're with a group of guys and you haven't seen in a long time, or gals, or you're doing a little celebration, buy a higher end stick. Try it. Yeah. I mean, you you'd be pleasantly surprised. This, I would smoke again. Given to me, I I didn't give it to you. Yeah, yeah. You didn't buy this. Yeah, that's oh, it. Shit. That's another yeah. thing. He's complaining about the price point, and it was all my money. So, but yes, so, anyway. um, as always take from all of this, what yeah. you will, you know, um, it, it, it is what it is. I will look forward to smoking more out of the Mirafell line. I haven't um, bought you home any Alphonse. Yeah. So I'm being selfish I've, that way. I've, I've smoked a few Alphonse's, uh, a couple but, but there, but there are some, no, yeah. there, there's no, yeah, no, I, the, the ones I've had have been short as well. And I look at them like, oh God, at least the Atabays I smoked have been like Churchill size. So, you know, so I will say though, like, I'm not a, like, I don't smoke a ton of higher end cigars, but I also don't smoke a ton of like 
five to eight dollar scars. Like I'm more like you said, like twelve up yeah. to the twenties, like in between there. So when I do smoke one of these higher end cigars, like I I've tried a few and now I know which ones I like and I will continue to buy those. I wanted to try this because this is something a lot of people have been talking about and like, you know, have said is really good. And I found it to be a really enjoyable cigar considering I am a more full bodied cigar yeah. smoker. I enjoyed this tonight. I was full. I had a lot to eat, and yeah, you know, and like, I I kind of liked that it was warm. Like I said, I hard. I I like the the fuller bodied cigars. I love Connecticut broadly. Now but you do. I, I do, but 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 one but one of my favorite like super premiums is that Davidoff Anniversario Number Two in the Tubo. I see, and I'm um, it's particularly, a, it, 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 and I'm not. And it's a, a fan of that. And it's a smooth, mild, creamy cigar that is absolutely amazing. You know, but that's, you know, but that's, you know. So on, you, on. I think if I, I think size matters to you as well. <laughs> yeah. Flatter. Yeah. Just saying. But no, like to you, the size of certain cigars matter. You're never, you are not a short cigar smoker. I'm, I'm not. He, he's not. And I'm I not. can smoke short. Well, I'm just, that's just who I am as a person. Yeah. I, I want, I want like, a I like Gusto. A, I want a Toro. Like a I want a Churchill. I also do like the, the smaller cigars. Yeah. Um, but I also have, I'm not a smoker like you are. Like I don't just, I can't just sit for very long and smoke a cigar, even though you're, you would think it would be opposite because I can sit all day and binge watch Netflix, but you you will sit at your computer. You like a smoke that's going to last yeah. you a while to get you through your tasks. Yeah. For me, I sit down and I enjoy it, but then I'm like, I got a thousand other things to do where I can't be in the house smoking a cigar. Yeah. So it's different for me, you know? So I don't mind the shorter smokes, but I think you are definitely a, a smoker of a oh, yeah. larger size. Yeah. I am a, I'm a rube. A rube. Um, a rube, and that's it. So, but I, but I enjoyed this cigar, and I encourage people to at least try going outside your box. You know, and again, like I said, I'm not a huge like Connecticut or a light or going outside your cigar box. Your cigar box. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just think you should try other things. Like I'm always like I'll gravitate to stuff that <clears throat> I know is going to give me that little fix or whatever that I'm looking for at that moment. But I think it's nice to go outside your everyday common pace. Yes. You got to push yourself, and then it pushes your palate and it challenges you. This just might not have been the right cigar tonight with the right at the right time or with the right meal that you ate. You know, just could have been. And then the construction for you was off. Yeah, you know. So I would say try it twice. Yeah, <laughs> try it twice. Maybe a hundred dollars. That's not your money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no money. Yeah, I am not buying Kevin another yeah. one. Yeah, no. <laughs> So, uh, all right, cats and kittens, um, that's all we got. Um, we'll catch you on the flip side.